So last week Blender 4.2 came out and to be honest it's a pretty cool update because it comes with all these new matrix nodes. So I thought it would be a good idea to give you a good introduction into matrix nodes by creating some kind of sculpture like this. However before we have a look at this in Blender we have to ask the question what actually are matrix transformations? So let's say we have a point that is positioned at 2.1 and in 2D space we can move this point to a different position with matrix transformations. And this can be done with a 2x2 two two matrix and the matrix that you see over here is the identity matrix and this basically means that there are no transformations happening at the moment. But if we change the first number of the matrix the point moves over the x-axis and if we change the last number it moves over the y-axis. However, the transformation becomes really visible if we look at multiple points at the same time. Then, if we change the numbers in the matrix, we see that we're actually not moving the points, but we're kind of scaling the entire thing. And this also works in a 3D environment, of course, just by making the matrix 3x3 three three or 4x4. Four four. So now that we have a rough understanding of what matrix transformations are, let's go back into Blender and see how it's implemented over there. So at first we're going to do some matrix transformations on this cube. So let's click on the cube and create a new geometry nodes for it. And in order to do good matrix transformations on this, we want to subdivide it a lot. So if you do a subdivide mesh node, we can subdivide it like six times or something like that. So the first matrix node that we're going to use is a combine matrix node. And this combine matrix is literally a matrix. So it's literally a four by four matrix with raw numbers. And you see that the output of this is a matrix transformation. And the way this node translates to an actual matrix is as followed. So we have column one, that's over here, column one in this matrix. Column two is this column, column three and column four. And within those columns, we have rows, right? So we have row one, two, three, four, and that's basically row one, two, three, four in an actual matrix. But you're probably wondering, how are we with this node going to change the shape of this cube? And I totally get that, but I'm happy to tell you that it's actually not that hard. So the first node that we want to do is, of course, a set position node, because we want to change the position of those points. And then if we do a transform point node, which is also part of one of the new matrix nodes, we can put the vector into the position. And as this vector, we just want to use the original position of each point because that's what we want to transform and then the transformation that we want to apply to those points is going to be this matrix so if we put that over here and now if you're changing the value of column one row one we're basically scaling the cube over the x-axis as you can see or you can go to column two and then row two then you're basically scaling it over the y-axis or column three and then row three then you're basically doing it over the z-axis one thing that becomes very easy with matrix transformations is sharing an object over a certain axis so if i take for example column one and then row two then you see we can share it over the y-axis and that's really cool or if we do column two row one then we're doing it over the x-axis or you can do it over the z-axis or this set axis, just whatever you like. But of course, these matrix nodes are a lot cooler if we combine them with actual mathematics. So in this example, we're going to use some sine and cosine to create some cool wavy effect over our object. So let's say that we want to have a wave that goes from top to bottom, kind of like this over the cube. So then the formula needs to be affected by the z axis of each point. And to get access to that z-axis, we want to use a position node and a separate xyz node. Connect that like this. Now we have control over the z-axis of each point. If we connect, for example, the z-axis with row 2 like this, then you see you're already getting an interesting shape. It's kind of sharing it from top to bottom, like on different levels. And the cool thing is, if we put this into a sign, we're getting like a wavy effect. So if we do a math node and you set this from add to sign, then you see we're already getting some waviness in it, but we want to make this stronger. So let's do another math node, which we set on multiply, and let's multiply this by a higher number so that we're getting kind of like a cool wavy effect. And that's really cool. And then you see we're already getting some uh, abstract uh, things. And basically how you can see this is that over the Z axis, it is sharing it in a different way, kind of like from left to right. And to make this even cooler looking, we can also implement some cosine in this. So if we take this sine node 
shift D it to duplicate it and set it on cosine. Now if we plug in the multiply node right over there and then the cosine into the row one of column two and then we're getting something like this and uh, yeah that looks quite abstract and interesting however it's kind of squeezed right so let's scale it over the z axis by changing column three and then row three kind of like this and then you see you're getting an very interesting shape. So now that we have this shape, let's leave the combined matrix node for now, because the next thing that I want to show you is adding another transformation on top of this transformation. And to do this, we're going to use a multiply matrices node. And at first you would think that this multiply matrices node multiplies one matrix with another. And it kind of does that, but that's a bit of a hard way to think about it. But an easier way to think about this is that it first does the transformation that it gets from the combined matrix node and then after that it does the second transformation that it gets and i think the second transformation should be that this shape becomes smaller the higher it gets so that it kind of gets that spear shape so to say and that we're going to do with a node that is new to blender 4.2 but i think it's one of the best nodes that they've ever created for blender in the history of the whole program and that node is a combine transform node and then you might be thinking but this node looks pretty much the same as the transform geometry nodes. It also has like a translation and a rotation and a scaling socket. And you're right on that one. However, there's a big difference between these two. The transform geometry can only affect an object as a whole. So it cannot deform an object like this. For example, it can only move, rotate and scale the entire object as one thing. However, the combined transform node does not move the entire thing as a whole. I mean, it can do that, but it's capable of moving, rotating and scaling the individual points of a mesh, which is really powerful. And of course, you were capable of doing that before. However, with this node, it's a thousand times easier. So if we connect the combined transform node with the second socket of the multiply matrices node, and we then change the X translation, then you see that kind of looks weird. And the reason why it doesn't look like what we would expect it to do is because the transformation of the combined transforms happens after the transformation of the combined matrixes node. Because if we switch these, then you will see it works perfectly fine because the combined transform happens before the combined matrices node. However, we do want to have it switched like this. So what we want to do in this combined transform is changing the scale of this thing so that the scaling becomes smaller the higher a point is so to do this we of course need to have axis again over the z location of each point and we do this again with these nodes so let's take them shift d them to over there and then we want to change the scaling over the x axis and the y axis but not the z axis of course so to do this separately let's do combine xyz just like this and then let's connect the z axis with the x and the y and of course make the z axis one now you will see okay in the middle the z axis is of course zero so then the scaling is zero and of course the higher it gets the bigger it becomes but we want to make it that it goes big over here and smaller to the top so we need to know what is the minimum location and the maximum z location of each point and to do this, we want to get an attribute statistic node. And the geometry from which we want to have the minimum and maximum Z location is the geometry that comes out of this subdivide mesh node. So let's put that over there. And then as the attribute, let's put the Z axis. Now I also recommend we have two lines going over here. Let's do shift and right click to make it a joint. And this is possible with the node wrangler add-on. So now if we use a map range node, basically at the moment it says it goes from 0 to 1, but that's not the case, right? The z-axis does not go from 0 to 1. However, it goes from this minimum value to this maximum value. And then you see we're getting something that goes from bigger to smaller. However, it's reversed. So let's switch these two values so that it's like that. And then you see you're getting kind of like a crystal object or something like that. And I think that's pretty cool. So you see that with very little matrix nodes, you can already get a pretty cool result like this. However, this doesn't really look like the things I had for my introduction video. And that's because in that case, I did not apply these transformations on a cube. However, I did it on a different object. And that object I'm just going to give to you. And that object looks like this. So it's like three long cylinders. And these are the nodes that I used for the creation of that beautiful thing and you look like this you can copy them if you want to and now to apply the same transformations onto this object 
we can first of all hold down shift and right click and make a joint over there and then we can connect the curve to mesh with this joint and now if we connect the set position node with the group output then you see we're getting a pretty cool shape like that however we have to tweak some variables i see so let's go over here into the combined matrix node and in the column tree we don't have to scale it over the z-axis anymore so let's make this value one and then also in the multiply node over here let's set this value lower to something like this and then you see we have created a pretty cool shape and to be honest the easiest way to make this object like bend to left and right or something like that is by adding in a simple d4 modifier set to bend and then bend it like left and right over whatever axis you like to do and also of course if you want to add a material to this thing we can go into material preview mode and then let's also split our screen like this and go into the shader editor and now if you see if you change the base color of this thing you see nothing is really happening on this thing and the reason for that is we have to assign this material in geometry nodes and to do this let's do a set material node right over here and let's name this material a blue or something like that and then let's go over here and make this the blue material and i like to make this like a metallic and then less rough looking material just like that yeah i think that looks cool however i can totally understand that if you're looking at these nodes and then especially the new matrix node that you're thinking oh my god how am i ever going to learn this what is all of this i have no idea what am i looking to i wish there was just some place that i can learn all of these nodes by myself in a very easy and chill way well then i have good news for you because i released the big notebook it's a book that explains every single node in geometry nodes in the easiest way possible the book starts from the very basics of geometry nodes and slowly progresses towards more advanced techniques the book is available on my gumroad and it's also updated to blender 4.2 so every new node has been added in and you know what to celebrate the new blender update let's do a little discount so if you use the code matrix to buy your book you'll get 25 percent off of your purchase this discount is valid until the 10th of august so be sure to get your copy of the big notebook today and with that being said there's actually one more example that i want to show you with matrix nodes the field in which matrix transformations is a very popular thing to do is in video games because think about it if you're playing super mario for example and mario gets hit by those red mushrooms he becomes bigger and that becoming bigger that's a matrix transformation and that's exactly what i've done in blender so if we have a look if i press play you will see i've created basically a super mario simulator so if the monkey hits a red mushroom it becomes bigger and if it gets hit by a blue mushroom it becomes smaller so let's have a look at the node setup for this so if we take a look like this i should have organized this a little bit better but if we take a look this is the node setup for that entire system it looks like a lot but it's actually quite easy i have an entire simulation zone over here and the thing that it's simulating is just the monkey and the points on which the mushrooms are instanced and the most important thing that i want to take a look at now is where the transformations is happening and that's over here over here i have two set positions this set position is making the monkey bigger and this one is making it smaller and i'm doing this with the combined transform over here you see the combined transform the scaling is on 1.1 for each axis and that means it becomes bigger so that's what i'm using for the first set position however the second one should become smaller so basically it should be this combined transform however then the reverse so i'm using an invert matrix node to invert that scaling and this way i only need one combined transform node and not multiple which is pretty annoying to work with but this way it's pretty easy and this is then of course another way of implementing matrix nodes in blender however there are way more things to discover with matrix nodes in blender and that's exactly what i'm going to do in the next couple of weeks so really stay tuned for more matrix nodes on this channel so i hope blender and me have not scared you off with all these matrix transformations and mathematical nodes in geometry nodes actually i hope i was able to give you like a nice introduction and a good understanding of what it actually is and if i did and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and if you don't want to miss out on any future videos i recommend subscribing and with that being said check out the big notebook and use the code matrix to get 25 percent off of your purchase and i see you in the next one